Hi. On Sunday, I made the claim that grace might just be the most important concept in the Bible, in Christianity, and in the world. It's a bold statement, um, and I'm able to make that statement because grace is a word primarily about God. Michael Horton wrote that in grace, God gives nothing less than himself. Grace, then, is not a third thing or a substance mediating between God and sinners. It is Jesus Christ in redeeming action. As Christians, we live each day by the grace of God. Paul in Titus 2 verse 11 tells us that the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives. Grace is something we grow in. In 2 Peter 2:18, 2, um, it says, We grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. God transforms everything about us through grace. Our motivations, our desires, our behaviours, our speech even. Colossians 4, 6 encourages us to let our speech always be gracious. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10 tells us our identity is the result of grace. And Romans 5, 2 points to the fact that our standing before God is based on grace. In 2 Timothy 2, 9, we are called to holiness out of grace. And verse 1 in the same chapter encourages us to be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I could go on and on and on. There are so many verses um, and so many parts of our identity in Christ that are shaped and based on grace. Grace is so important in the New Testament that Paul doesn't get beyond two sentences, the two sentences in in each of his letters before he mentions grace. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, Paul says that God's grace is sufficient for you. And that's true because God's grace is as big um, and as powerful as he is. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, in the New King James Version, it says, God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Modern translations often say God is able to bless you abundantly. If we want to have a clear idea of how much we owe to God's grace on a daily basis, we could start counting our blessings because blessings are linked to grace. God gives us good things. Those good things are blessings. They're undeserved gifts. If you have a talent, it's a blessing. It's a gift. You haven't earned it. It was there inside you already in its latent form. Perhaps this would be a good time to uh, stop and uh, maybe think for a few moments, maybe grab a pencil, a piece of paper or a pen and a piece of paper and write down a list of blessings. I like to do that in my quiet time sometimes. I call it a kind of gratitude exercise because when I start to think about all the good things in my life and the blessings uh, from God that I've experienced, um, touches of his grace, um, at that point, it causes my heart to reach out to him in, in thanks, really. There is no good thing in my life that I can't trace back to God. He's generous and he's gracious and he's merciful with me. Um, and I'd like to give you some questions to just kind of think about, maybe in your life group or even on your own. Um, and they're very, very simple questions. I'd just like you to think about, are there um, moments where I've experienced God's grace this week or God's blessing this week? Um, and I'd also like you to consider what's the uh, biggest impact that God's grace has had on your life? In other words, how has God changed or impacted you so far? What are the most significant things? Are there times when you have been shown mercy or grace by someone else and how did you feel?
Are there times when you have shown someone else mercy and grace? And what came out of that situation? You don't have to use all the questions or even any of them, but um, I really hope this has been helpful.